With the former King T'Chaka dead and the enemies of Wakanda both literally and figuratively at their doorstep, will T'Challa be able to rise to the occasion? Well, let's hop into the pages of Ultimate Black Panther issue number two and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up from where the last issue left off, T'Challa is still reeling from the assassination of his father, the whole nation is. But what this brand new crisis has really served to do is underline just how unsure of himself T'Challa is in his role as king. Rem Remember, he's basically only getting the reins now, this late in life. And because he hasn't lived a lot of life outside Wakanda, he ends up really over course correcting, choosing to crack down on his nation. Arresting people, interrogating people, and generally just being really brutal because he knows full well the only people who could assassinate his father are people who are actively given the inside track to Wakanda's weaknesses by a local. But believe it or not, that's not actually King T'Challa's worst coping mechanism right now. As we learn, he's actually returned to the Voodoo Khan for another prophecy, despite him calling it all mystical hogwash last issue. Even Queen Okoye thinks this is a bad course of action, reminding T'Challa that the Voodoo Khan are not loyal to him or the crown, they're only loyal to their own prophecies. Hell, it's like kind of taking a drug to cope with your problems. Oh sure, it feels good now, but you're gonna need a bigger, nastier hit every time afterwards. Well, what exactly do these mystical fortune tellers have to say to their king? Well, they have another prophecy for him, a woman of of light, someone who is around the king right now will come and change his life. This woman will give T'Challa an heir, and this heir will be the prophesized child that the nation has been waiting for since forever. Black Panther, of course, jumps to the conclusion that they must be talking about Queen Okoye. I mean, after all, she's my best friend, the light of my life, my closest counsel. She's also the one I'm politically and contractually bonded to, so, you know, obviously I'm gonna have kids with her at some point, right? Even though, again, Again, the subtext I remind you is that while these two respect each other, they don't actively love each other, and they're just kind of being king and queen because it's what's expected of them. Now, it's after that we transition on over to Rao and Khonshu. They're taking a meeting with a mysterious individual who is revealed to be their mole inside Wakanda. Confirming what we already knew from the last issue, what these two are really after is Vibranium, which is why they've been attacking all of these small villages which possess their own mine. Of course, they would have no way to know what to look for unless this mole was feeding them information. For what it's worth, though, this mysterious individual, who I might add cuts a very noticeable female figure, is getting a little fed up with her co-conspirators, their slowness to act, and their endless hunger for more. She's also, interestingly enough, the first person to drop the name Moon Knight and says that she's not afraid of either of these dudes. Which, of course, implies whoever she is, she's very powerful and very brave. It's after that we actually get to see Black Panther take the field against the Moon Knight's soldiers. In a rather interesting bit of characterization, this Black Panther doesn't actually fight his enemies one-on-one. -on -one. Instead, he makes use of something called the Throne, a giant panther-themed mech built and designed by Shuri. And oh my god, the longer I look at this thing, I just cannot help but see a Zoid. Remember Zoids, everybody? Zoids were cool. Now, while that battle was easily won, the war is far from over. T'Challa and his closest allies know that they have a mole inside their ranks. T'Challa trusts that no one in this room would be betray him, right? Because it's his family, his bodyguards. Surely whoever this guilty party is must be someone outside their circle, someone who desperately wants to climb the ranks but is unable to because of the rigidness of Wakandan society. Or at least that's the idea that Queen Okoye is actively putting in King T'Challa's head. Hmm, I wonder. Now, T'Challa's two closest generals, two brand new characters named Anan and Faxul, actually believe they have some good news. They think they've managed to track down where Khonshu and Ra are hiding. Hiding. Up until now, tracking these guys was basically impossible because they were always on the move, but thankfully, after examining some migration patterns in the savannah, the two hunters think they've managed to zero it down to a place where no animal is actively traveling anymore. Faxel and Anon say that they should rally the troops and march to this place right now, but King T'Challa has other ideas. He says that there will be an animal stalking these parts, but it will be a very particular brand of panther. Again, the idea being here that Black Panther 
Gunther's own fear and uncertainty following his father's death is in the actual driver's seat here, pushing him to do something kind of stupid. Basically, he needs to act as hard as possible and prove that he is the number one king in charge before anyone else starts getting ideas. This, of course, ends up backfiring on him in a horrible way as he gets closer and closer to Ra and Khonshu's base. His ship ends up malfunctioning. Geez, almost as if someone in his inner circle of trust knew he was coming here anyway and as such decided to set a trap for him. With Black Panther kicked from his ship, he's forced to fend on his own. The Moon Knights unload on him with multiple, multiple rounds. And there's no telling how all of this could have ended up if Black Panther was not ultimately saved at the last second by the appearance of Wind Rider, aka Storm, for those paying attention. She comes down to save the king in a bolt of light. Get it? Lightning, woman of light. Yep, this is the one who the prophecy was talking about, the one who will give Black Panther and Wakanda an heir, who in turn might very well end up saving all of Wakanda. And it's on that note right there, the comic comes to a close, everyone. And so that was Ultimate Black Panther issue number two. And I'm really happy to say that all the momentum that Brian Hill was able to build up in that first issue continues to build here in this one. Black Panther in the 616 universe is always shown to be super confident, super worldly, yet here to see a T'Challa who has never left the borders of his own nation, who is deeply insecure, and who keeps trying to prove himself is a pretty damn interesting idea. I also love the idea that in this brand new universe, King T'Challa and Storm are so closely tied from the get-go. I feel like that's a relationship that a lot of fans really loved for a really long time and that the 616 universe killed way too early and never bothered to bring back mainly due to multimedia reasons. Hell, having Storm and T'Challa get together actually be part of some bigger ancient prophecy only further leads me to believe that it's actually Queen Okoye who's the secret bad guy here. I mean, what better way to escape a loveless marriage than have the kingdom that you're queen of end up getting taken over by someone else? Which, in that case, wow, Okoye possibly being a bad guy in this brand new Ultimate Universe, that would be unexpected. Overall, I think I'd feel comfortable giving this one a Another very strong 8 out of 10. The Ultimate Universe so far continues to move from strength to strength, and I hope they can keep doing that. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Cape Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quests, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye